So this is the LFO modulator of Bitwig Studio and we have three iterations of the LFO. We have um, this one here, which I want to explain in this video. And then we have here the classic LFO and we have the beat LFO. And today is about, it's only about the LFO itself. And uh, this iteration or this version of the LFO in Bitwig Studio uh, has two distinct features that no none of the other two has. And this is, um, you can go up to kilohertz, which is the audible range. So you can use the LFO to modulate something uh, at audio rate to create maybe sounds or um, textures. And we have here the pitch option, um, which means um, when you have a note input or you have a note clip or key MIDI keyboard uh, connected and you press a note, maybe C3, then this modulator modulates exactly at the speed of 262 hertz, which is um, the frequency of the note C3. We can change the modulation speed by typing in keys or notes and change to the frequency of that key. Um, so to make maybe synthesizers out of the modulation uh, system in Bitwig Studio. And we have, of course, here a lot of different other options, but these are kind of self-explanatory. We have here Hertz, um, we could dial in um, maybe one Hertz of modulation, uh, kilohertz. Then we have bar here. I use this maybe to uh, modulate or to use the modulation as kind of a sequencing tool because bar is pretty slow. And I can dial in here maybe a modulation going on over the course of six bars. And it's pretty nice to actually use this to uh, sequence uh, musical stuff blend in or blend out some kind of bad pads or sequences or whatever. Um, so it's nice to creating sounds. It's nice to uh, freely modulate your returns. It's nice to uh, use this to sequence stuff. And we have, of course, here all the synchronized uh, options to synchronize the LFO speed to the tempo of your song. So it's eight notes here, eight notes, um, on eight notes of um, 110 uh, BPM here. You can use this to make nice rhythmic content. Um, then we have here the tilt. We can change the wave shape, which is, um, says here on the top, a morphable wave shapes plus delay and fade in. So we have here a morphable wave shape, so we can change this from a sawtooth to a reversed sawtooth and blend this over to a sine and to a rounded triangle if you want to. And we have a triangle, of course, in the default setting. Um, then we have here, let's switch this back to, uh, we have here a delay. So you can delay um, when you apply the LFO by a certain amount of time. And this is probably only useful when you have to switch the note option here. So every time I press a key on the keyboard, you can see nothing happens. And then it takes one second until it applies the modulation. So hit the key, one second, then it applies, right? Um, then we have here the fade in, which means when I press the key um, on my keyboard and reset the face, this slowly fades in over the course of one second and applies slowly uh, the modulation amount. You can see it slowly comes in, right? So maybe you make this longer seconds. The key, nothing, and then slowly, f slowly fades in. So this is something where you can fade in the amount of the modulation. Um, um, then we have here the amount itself. So you don't need to modulate this. You can use here the fade in, like I showed you. Um, so this is the amount. So when we use this LFO here, modulate something like the cutoff, um, you can see nothing happens here because the amount is at zero. We can increase here the amount. You can see modulation is applied. We have 100% applied to um, to cut off now. You can also change the amount by using the modulator handle. So you click the handle, everything becomes slight, slightly bluish. Then you can click and drag and can change the amount. So we have here um, maybe 40 steps and then you can use the amount to dial in here 50% of the uh, steps we dialed in here. So you can change the amount here and of course with the modulator handle itself. Uh, but this is maybe more practical when you want to modulate this with a different modulator, of course. Um, okay, 
Then we have here the bipolar option, which means just, yeah, you can see here we modulated the knob, the negative range and the positive range. And if you don't want to do that, you only want to have it modulate in the positive range, then you um, just disable this. And you can see now it goes here from the original knob position up to the modulation amount we dialed in. And if you switch this back here to bipolar, you can see it goes also in the negative range to the same amount. Um, then we have here this note drop down. Looks like this. We have free, note, sync, and rant. Free is basically that the modulator doesn't care for anything. It just modulates freely every time, and you can't stop the LFO from doing so. It's just freely modulating um, and oscillating away. And um, the other option here is note. So every time you press a key on the keyboard or have a note on your note clip, you can re-trigger the phase of the LFO. And you can see when I press here, keys on my keyboard, you can see it switches always back every time I trigger, switches back to the start of the phase of this LFO shape. So it's a basic re-triggering with notes. It also says here, resets to phase on new notes. Um, then we have the sync option. This is a bit harder to explain, but maybe not too much. So um, this synchronizes basically the LFO to your arranger. Inside of the arranger, we have a, a phase signal running throughout our, uh, the whole track here, or the whole um, arranger timeline. So you can synchronize your LFO to that. You can imagine you have on each track or on, on the timeline here itself, you have kind of a ramp signal starting at zero, going up to one, going back to zero, going up to one, going back to zero, and so on. And this goes throughout the whole arranger track here. And you can synchronize the LFO to that. So this means in practical, in practical terms that when you hit play here, the LFO is synchronized on the sync option. You can see here we are, when, you, when we cross here the three mark, we have the modulation amount exactly at the tipping point here of this triangle. Every time you cross this point, and even loop this here, that the modulation amount is exactly the same, but the same position in your arrangement. So you can kind of make sure that every time you cross or every time you go into some position in your arrangement, you get the same sound, the same modulation of out of your modulator. You can use this to bring in some predictable results. Um, then we have here the randomize option, which means every time you press the, press the key or you have a node input, the LFO resets or to a different point in the phase. So you can see I'm pressing here nodes. Uh, transport is at, uh, it's stopped. And I'm just pressing nodes on the keyboard to reset the LFO, but you reset it to a different point in your face. Um, then we have here the face itself, so you can change where the LFO starts. Um, it's, yeah, also not hard to explain really. So when we switch this here to sync, and you know we are, go here to the three, three marker of our arrangement. And we hit every time the same position here. Yeah? You can use the phase signal and offset this. For instance, you can say, I want at this position, I want exactly this LFO value instead of this one. So you can offset basically the phase of the LFO shape. Um, also, when you set this to re-trigger, set this to note. And every time I press a key, it resets to the phase of zero. The zero position or to zero degrees you can offset this here maybe to 100 degrees and then you restart basically at this position instead of this one right so it's more more or less like an offset for the uh, position of the playback uh, okay so then we have here um the polyphonic button which basically just means that you make this lfo polyphonic and when you play a chord or you press multiple notes on your keyboard or you paint in here a note clip, for instance, and you have multiple notes. 
you play all these notes at the same time you need the poly polyphonic lfo when you want to apply this uh, lfo to each voice individually um and to make it different on each voice you have to probably use a randomize modulator here also polyphonic and then you modulate with this randomize um, modulator maybe the lfo speed and then you get a different speed for each voice and each lfo then applies a different modulation amount to each note differently you can create a lot of nice movement in your chord progressions this way so i think um that's enough about the lfo um, i try to cover everything here as much as possible give some examples and yeah it's it's a very versatile uh, thing as as i said you can create it to use it to create sounds you can use it to create sequences uh, with the bar option here i use this all the time and also create synthesizers with it so very nice